What's up everybody, Brett here, and I'm back for some more Kingdom Rush Frontiers. And we're going to pick up where we left off last time. We knocked out the Dunes of Despair. So as I mentioned last episode of my free time, I went ahead and did the Heroic as well as the Iron Mo challenges to give us some extra stars. And I'm going to spend these on our upgrades now. And I was kind of taking a look. These three here just give us increased damage on our towers, while this one uh, increases the rally point and healing rate of our soldiers. This lowers the cooldown of Rain of Fire by 5 seconds and makes it a bit stronger with two additional meteors. And this gives us better fighters. So they went from trained volunteers to men at arms, and I think I'm going to get this upgrade and make them champions. So even more health and great weapons. And they look cooler, so that's what I'm all about. Uh, so. We're going to get into these pirate themed islands here. So as I mentioned last episode also, we're going to use Captain Blackthorn. Now I wanted to mention to you guys in my free time, I also went and did these missions on veteran difficulty in an attempt to try and level up Mirage. But you see here after three levels, she only gained this tiny fraction of, of experience. And that was just, that was just not enough. Um, I wanted to level her up to maybe at least level 4, that way when we made it to the other side of these islands we could think about using her on some of these missions here. But uh, as it stands we're going to bring in our new hero and before we jump into the next mission I want to briefly bring you in. This was a super fun uh, Iron Mo challenge and I want to just kind of show you how I did it really quick. That way if you're following along, along at home and you want to know kind of the, the secret to it you will know because this is a bit of a guide so uh, I do want you guys to be able to replicate what I do so the big kind of secret wish. here yes, master. As you wish. are the yes, genies As you wish. Yes, master. As you wish. so getting two groups of these guys and putting them together yes, they're wish. a pretty strong wall yes, of the units now I ended up getting a lot of achievements for this because one I hired a ton of mercenaries so that was an achievement and then two these genies have an ability that is on kind of a relatively low cooldown that transfigures a unit, turns them into some kind of random object, right? Or a dancing frog or something ridiculous. So when you have a bunch of them together, uh, they're kind of like cycling their cooldowns. So six of them together will turn large units, uh, very powerful, the immortals, uh, which these are designed to take out. It'll just turn them into a harp or something or treasure chest and then you're very easily able to to handle that wave and then against low tier you know units like warhounds or something they still have 350 health and hit for 20 to 40 damage so they're very strong the only thing you have to do is to make sure that you are backing them up with some uh just some cheap militiamen you don't have to upgrade them uh just keep them in front let them take all the hits and the genies will stay healthy and whenever an immortal gets into range they'll turn them into some ridiculous thing and you'll be able to take it out but you also want to keep in mind that there are a lot of um, flying units this map so and then kind of for a final thing without me actually spending the time to go ahead and do it you also notice the dune worm has been defeated so you don't have to, this is basically telling you you don't have to worry about the mechanic where the worm comes up from the ground and eats you uh, but one of the later stages you start getting those archers so the archers are super good at taking out the genies and if you just leave the genies right here they will all die so when the archers make it past you move the genies down here and you cut off the next wave or you move them as far back as you can yes master and these you would just bring them back here and then let your archer towers deal with the uh, the archers themselves so that you don't lose the 150 gold investment of these guys so you have to be very aware of which wave you're on to bring in the genies or move them out so alright guys I think that's enough of a tutorial on that get back out of there but it was fun it took me the first try I failed because I wasn't making full use of the uh, the mercenaries but then afterwards I was like you know what I think the only tool I have to beat these immortals is going to be the genies and it ended up working perfectly okay let's jump into Buccaneers Den and this is a fun map that I remember from way back 
Let me read the campaign blurb for you guys. Behold Buccaneer's Den. Nowhere else will you find a worse collection of unruly freebooters and dastardly pirates. And nowhere but here will you find a better crew to sail the Crystal Sea. After greasing some dirty palms, we've learned that Lord Malagar has boarded a ship towards the gates of Nazeru. Hiring a crew, however, will have to wait as an enemy fleet is heading towards us. Ahoy. Okay. So let's hop on in. This is the first time I've done this this map in a long time. Sweet. So we're unlocking our level 4 artillery piece. Dwarp. Earthquake tower that damages and slows all enemies in range. And it's a crazy powerful tower. And if I remember right, there's some kind of cool like trick I used to do. Hmm. Not so much a trick, maybe. Oh, there's this mechanic here, which we'll see if we can get into. Do you do anything? No. But if you'll remember right, in the last mission, we unlocked the Archer Tower's fourth level, the Crossbow Tower, that when you level it up and you unlock its, uh, I want to say it's its Crow's Nest or Raven's Perch or something like that, it increases the range of nearby towers. So if we put a Dwarven Bombard here, and increase its range with a crossbow tower here by the time we have that tier 4 dwarven bombard uh, tier 4 crossbow tower which won't be very long in this 15 wave uh, map this dwarf tower will be hitting this entire huge area and it hits everything in its area because it has a solid AOE oh let's take a look at Captain Blackthorn too 300 HP not bad he has pretty high damage because we we do have one of his upgrades that increases attack damage and no armor. So I think we could do something like double dwarf tower here. Before we do anything else, I think this is uh, this is where we want to be right here. Something like this, I think, is the opener. And we also have to notice here, so for those of you guys who watched my first uh, playthrough of the original Kingdom Rush game, you know, dual exits is not going to be a surprise for you. But for those of you who are who are watching these tower defense games for the first time, you'll see the game has gotten more complicated as we've progressed. So there's one entrance and two exits, and that even may change mid-map sometimes, and many times that does change. So before we get started, also I want to note there is this mechanic here off to the side. So we can hire this for 25 gold, 45 gold, or 60 gold. And we can use this to take down large targets if we find ourselves leaking. I don't remember if this lets us target or if it does it on its own. But, I mean, 25 gold is really nothing if we manage to, uh, to get this rolling. So a nice little synergy here that I remember between Captain Blackthorn and the... Uh, the Assassin's Guild. So the Assassin's Guild has an upgraded ability. Do we want to upgrade this one or this one? An upgraded ability that allows it to steal gold whenever it gets a kill. And the same thing is true of Captain Blackthorn. He has a chance to get increased gold from a kill. So we can end up getting a lot of extra gold from killing weak desert thugs. If we put an Assassin's uh, Guild here and level them up to uh, For honor and glory. to start stealing that gold as soon as possible. And let's see how this build works. This is a bit strange, but maybe this will work. And I don't remember if Captain Blackthorn does any sort of ranged attack. He does. Wow. Okay, that was cool. That was one of his abilities that throws an explosive keg. He's already taken a lot of damage. I think that was from the cannon there. And there you'll see, every time you hear that little gold sound, I think that's Captain Blackthorn getting increased gold. And that's also a sound we're going to be looking to hear when we upgrade the Assassin skill. And I think we'll prioritize that. This might not be an optimal build if you're playing on veteran difficulty. But I'd be very interested in knowing exactly how much gold he's going to generate for us with that ability over the course of this 
game. So here, pickpocket. You have a 30% chance of stealing some gold from its victim. And since they're right here at the beginning of the of the map, they'll they'll have lots of opportunities to steal gold. So the sooner you upgrade that, the better. And we're only two gold away from getting it. Yeah, so let's get that instantly. And you'll start seeing the ching 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 going off. And yeah, we'll increase the chance to 40%. And this is one of the few maps, if I remember right, where this is like just a sweet strategy. You see our gold is just going up a little bit. And there we go. Let's get him out of there. Those cannons do a lot of damage from this ship. And also, I kind of missed it, we do have a another mercenary camp here. So they have Corsairs and Buccaneers. So these guys throw Molotov cocktails. And these are just kind of standard fighters that are pretty cheap. And we're going to want to get the dodge here. It makes them much more offensive and defensive. And we'll prevent them from dying. We want them to stay alive. They're going to be able to quickly finish off all of these low tier enemies. And I think at some point we're going to want to get make sure we have anti-air protection. I don't remember if this map has a lot of air. Okay, we didn't have to do anything there, which is nice. There's a mermaid. Huh, we unlocked an achievement, we found the mermaid. Okay. So let's look to get a crossbow fort. ASAP. And this is also where it would be nice to have the upgrades for our our assassins right now. The one that gives them increased... Uh, let's back them up just a little bit. There's one that gives them increased regen and a better rally point. Uh, I think that would be a nice one to prioritize here. But you'll see here our champions have 90 HP as well as 3 to 6 damage and now they have low armor which is also pretty valuable and there we go we now have some anti-air and I think we're gonna prioritize upgrading the further back dwarven artillery piece despite the fact that this one is always firing so in the short term we'll get more value from this one Let's move it back. There we go. Managed to micro him away. In the short term, we'll get more value from this one, but as we get this to tier 4, it's going to do a ton of damage, and it's going to hit everything once we get the Falconeer upgrade. So here we go, a new enemy, Sand Wraiths. Let's check out what they do. Often in command of dark armies, they leave a path of death and decay in their wake. Ranged attack. They can heal their allies and they spawn the fallen. So very similar to the necromancers, if you'll remember from the uh, the first game. And man, he just racks up the gold. I think he's only getting one gold every time, and he dies there. Let's go. Let's go finish this guy off. We don't want him to summon too many, too many more skeletons. Let's rain a fire here. There we go. So we now have a tier 3 Dwarven Bombard. We need to get to the Dwarp. Let's back it up. So we actually leveled our hero too, so excellent. We'll be able to upgrade one of his, uh, one of the abilities that he has that we don't currently have unlocked on him. And we're managing not to leak very far past the... Uh, the original opening position and that's where this assassins guild comes in handy sneak attack would be very strong on them as well but let's try and rush the dwarf tower and we kind of want to watch where we summon our reinforcements we want to summon them behind the assassins guild because we want the assassins guild to be the ones in combat because you just see how much gold they generate and there we go, we call early and we unlock the Dwarp. So when the Dwarp 
attacks, you see there, it, it hits everything at once, and that's why it's very strong. And we can upgrade it with Furnace Blast. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. So, uh, if you haven't noticed, they have all these little, like, uh, funny references in the upgrades. It also has a drill, which I think is a one-shot kill, but it's super expensive. You see there, 400 gold just for the drill. But the one that is worth it is the Furnace Blast. So, I'm not going to spend the gold on that right away. Because there is a trick to this map that I remember that hasn't occurred yet. Let's go ahead and use this to see where we can shoot. Ah, and we got him. So, okay, so we do get to pick our targets. And let's just nuke them before they, they overwhelm us in our starting position. But there is a trick to this map. I kind of remember what it is. And because of that, I'm going to get us some of these Buccaneers. And let's move them down here. And we can move the Buccaneers there. And we'll call early. The Buccaneers are very expensive, but they're, they're quite powerful. We can check out their stats here. 15 to 30 damage, but they throw like an explosive Molotov cocktail. We're generating tons of gold. We're only on wave 7, and we've managed to get quite a few very powerful upgrades. And we're going to look to get another crossbow fort here, just to cover ourselves from air. It also, I mean, it does do a lot of damage. It's worth getting it on its own, even if you don't upgrade it. But once we get the falconer on the center one, we should be giving increased range on all four of these towers so that'll be nice all right let's call early and we have a new enemy here and this is what i was remembering so the executioner an unstoppable killing force a strike from its axe delivers a swift death so very slow high health and it can kill soldiers so let's see it doesn't have it's not here yet but it will be, so let's give ourselves some slightly better soldiers. And we're going to have to see how we're going to choose to do our upgrades here. He does a lot of damage and he's really chunking down our hero. So here we go, the Molotov cocktails are going off, they're taking him down. really don't want him attacking our uh, buccaneers here. They cost us a lot of gold. So we'll, we'll invest there in upgrading them. And we'll get the Assassin's Guild because what they're good at is taking a large target like that that does a ton of damage versus these... On paper, these guys are very squishy, right? So when one of these executioners hits them, they take a lot of damage. But if they're dodging with their counterattacks then they're not taking that damage. And we'll get one level of pickpocket here. And we'll start dropping our reinforcements down below. And we can look to get... I think this is an excellent place for another crossbow tower. It's going to hit this wave as it comes by, and once their the range is increased, it'll hit the other. We also want to be careful of what we... Uh, well, we rain a fire because we want our assassins to do their work in the front line and to get us as much gold as possible. And this is where Furnace Blast would be coming in handy because it is 80 damage over 4 seconds, which is very good against these immortals. So here we go. Aim through the eyes, be quicker, be dead. There we go. Yeah, let's drop some fire. We're not, we don't want to leak here. And there we go. We get our far, first uh, ranged upgrade. So, if we do that again, Cannon Fodder and Hawkeye. 
Nice. So the Buccaneers are taking some damage. And we need magic here. So I think we're going to get a tier 3 magic tower. Unfortunately, we don't have the tier 4 yet. And I think we can get another crossbow tower there. And we can get it increased even further, which now affects this tower as well. And just look at the range on this now. Would also be pretty strong to upgrade this. But now that this one is affected, it's going to be very worth it for us to upgrade it. Because in addition to protecting our back line in this lane, it will also be covering us in this lane as well. Just drop some fire, get rid of some of these immortals. And he's getting quite a lot of experience from this. Make sure we're not neglecting this lane here. Because they could very easily start sending us some surprise waves. And I want to get at least one level of Furnace Blast. I would love to know how much gold these uh, these different towers have generated for us. Let's get Blackburn in the fight. We can summon early and drop some fire. And we can even look to get a second dwarf tower here. And that'll pretty much, once you have two of these type of towers, it's very similar to the first game uh, with Tesla towers or Dwarven Bombards. With this much AoE clear, there's almost no way anything will, uh, any weaker units will make it past this opening spot here. But we do want to get Furnace Blast. I think I'll prioritize that next. And here we go. So in the same way that the meteor ends up creating uh, burning terrain, it's going to have a, the same effect. A lot of armor, but the burning does very good against armor. It does very well against armor, I should say. I was raised in Louisiana, guys. My grammar is not... has never really been a priority for me. Hopefully that doesn't bother any of you out there. Let's summon early. And then we won't feel bad about nuking the, uh, the Sand Wraith. I have to remember the name, because to me he's just kind of like a necromancer. And I think we'll even get ourselves another magic tower here, a wizard tower. There are scorpions that come down this lane, and... These are very good against the Scorpions in their high armor. And they do a lot of damage, so they'll be good as well if we end up fighting against more Executioners or something like that. And the upgrade is cheaper. Than actually purchasing it, but we need to make sure we have enough wave clear. So let's get that and then we'll get another Furnace Blast. So we'll be Furnace Blasting units as soon as they step out. So nine giant scorpions and exactly what we were not afraid of, but what we were thinking would be coming. So the game is somewhat testing us. And I think we can get another archer tower, another crossbow tower back here. And we can also get a militia barracks on this side as well, just in case. Drop some fire. And we just want to hold units in this kind of area of AoE effect. That'll be very strong for us. He gets chunked down by the poison. So let's make sure. Let's bring him back up, and we can put these buccaneers safely off to the side here. And this way, the scorpions will never even attack them in melee. They shouldn't. I think they're just out of range. It's probably where they should have been placed all along, uh, to be honest. We're doing great. So let's upgrade this tower here. And let's fully upgrade 
the barrage ability, and you'll get to see it here. It does a ton of damage. Freedom! Give them slightly better dodge to help them against these worms. And then we'll also get some backup barracks down here, just in case. Because we have a ton of gold. And I'd love to show you guys the drill. It's just a really big one-shot. So we unlocked it. It's really not worth, but if you can get the guys to the enemies to bunch up in one area, the drill will come up and I think it hits more than one enemy. Those cannons have been brutal. But you'll see the fire, I mean there's there's really nothing that'll get past that much fire. We're just throwing down upgrades here. I think we're fine. Would be nice. Maybe if I hadn't let him die quite as many times to this cannon fire. He would have been closer to leveling. Getting him to level 5 would have been sweet. I see you, mermaid. I see you. Oh, look, there's Wilson. Oh, I didn't even notice Wilson. I'm glad I caught that. Yeah, if you guys see anything, uh, leave me a message in the comments section. Let me know if you, uh, if you saw something that I missed. But yeah, look how much gold we ended this, this map with. I mean, we, we really, that, that's... I would chalk that up to my experience on this map and remembering that that second lane was present. But we did get one level, so that's pretty sweet. And we have enough for more upgrades. So let's see. This is what I was looking at. So release the Kraken. Summon the Kraken to trap up to four enemies while slowing all others by 25%. I'm very curious what that looks like. I do not remember whatsoever. So we'll also just... We'll spend this point, get him some more life, make him a little bit tankier. But this seemed to be quite the powerful ability, uh, the explosive keg, the Roman bang. Looting was nice. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll prioritize looting after this, depending on how strong this ability is. And let's see, the next... So there's no more levels here in the Pirate Cove for us. We're going to go straight to Naziru's Gates. But if I remember right, and I do, there's going to be some bonus content maps on these islands after we finish the main storyline. So I'm still, I'm pretty high on uh, using Captain Blackthorn. That was super fun. Uh, Alric, I think, is stronger, thanks in, mostly to his Sand Warrior uh, units. But his gold generation could be pretty OP. But you know what guys, let's uh... So the Heroic Mode challenges aren't super unique, but the Iron Mode challenges are. So I think on camera from now on, I'm going to do the Iron Mode challenges, and then maybe do the Heroic Mode challenges in my free time. So you'll also notice now, the upgrade level is still limited to level 2, but we can use our heroes. So this will be kind of sweet for leveling, uh, getting our heroes kind of up and level before we jump into the next map. So let's take our Pirate King, and I've been playing Total War Warhammer 2, uh, for those of you guys who follow my channel, and the new DLC was all pirate themed, so in my head I'm looking at him and I'm like, this is Count Noctilus. It's not, but I'm sure you could see how I could get that confused. So anything we upgrade isn't going to affect this, uh, this challenge, so it doesn't really matter what we get. I kind of want to just get the Sworn Blades, these guys are super strong. But as we head into the next stage here, which I, I do remember, let's get Hellfire. Hellfire is good. And let's knock out this Iron Mode challenge. We'll get ourselves some more stars. Oh, Lord. Okay, so this is, <laughs> I mean, this is why I'm doing it, guys, because this is so much more unique than the standard map you really have the game will give you something that you have to figure out it's almost like a puzzle so i haven't done this in a long time and i would honestly expect to fail on my first shot because there's going to be something here that's going to throw kind of a like a kink in the the system here so i think what we're going to do
I don't know what the rally range is. Okay. This is a tricky one. Like a charm. And honestly, they took a lot of the best... Uh, like, this is one of the best positions here. They gave us a decent amount of gold. Ahoy, matey! Hoist the colors! Thinking something like that, but I think these are the most important here. So we're going to get these four. And then we're going to get three Corsairs to block up the path. As well as a Mage Tower here. And perhaps an Archer Tower there. And let's see how this goes. And we'll send our reinforcements to the top. Wow, and it does damage too. Oh, that's an awesome ability. Don't want him to take damage from those. Super annoying. So the Molotov cocktails are doing work. I think we're going to do something like this. Wow, that's so strong. If we had had that for the last level, it would have been like taking candy from a baby. And these Corsairs are very strong. And we want to protect our Buccaneers, so we're going to get some more Corsairs here. And we're going to put them down right there. And there we go. So we have like a nice little pocket for our Buccaneers to throw from. But we do need more Buccaneers to increase our DPS against all these armor targets. Don't want our hero to die, because he's doing a ton of our damage right now. There we go. He levels. And he's our first hero to level 5, so sweet. Let's just get rid of some of these guys to ease up some of the pressure on our waves. He is so strong. Yeah, I had no idea that also damaged. The way it was described, it seemed like something of a slow. And a slow ability seems a lot less powerful to me. It's still strong. A slow ability in a tower defense game is quite a strong ability, but it's if it doesn't do damage, obviously doing damage is just a straight upgrade. So I'm curious. I think it'll just affect more targets as we upgrade it. We'll look to get a crossbow fort here. Also, he's giving us so much gold that he's letting us do things that we might not otherwise be able to do with a different hero. And don't worry guys, after we do this, we're going to jump into the new map and knock that out. And let's get an upgrade to an adept tower here so we can do some magic damage versus these immortals. Okay, he's taking a lot of damage. Let's move him back here. We can have a little support. And you see we're back down to our tier 2 reinforcements. So they're pretty crappy. And I think the way we have this laid out is kind of perfect because we're not losing our guys. close to losing our guys here simply because the cannon decided to fire on them. But they seem to heal up okay. 
we can spend our gold there. I think that's a fine investment. And we're going to want to get some more damage here. Yeah, I was expecting the Executioners at some point. It's really just a matter of which lane they decide to go down. And they seem to be going down this lane. Send him up to do some damage. And I don't want him to kill our guys. They're too expensive. Like, if he's going to kill anyone, we want him to kill uh, our reinforcements or our hero. This is wave 101. This may be the end of the map here. I mean, we lost two of our guys, but that was it. We just had to make it to the end. So that wasn't too bad. Alright, so we got ourselves a star as well. And like I said, I'm going to do the... Uh, I'm going to get ourselves that extra star of the Heroic Mode Challenge in my free time. Because the Heroic Challenges are usually pretty similar. They're just kind of an amped up version of the original. So we have a chance to... Man, up to five enemies. That's better, but we're going to prioritize looting and we're just going to go ahead and get him maxed out on life and there's probably a more optimal way to do this so that he does more damage but i think that's fine mm. it's either him or alaric you know what this map i remember this map it's a desert themed map let's take alaric Blood and sand. we have our tier three sand warriors Let's take him and, and knock this out. And as we go into the jungle, I think maybe we'll use our captain some more. But here we go, Naziru's Gates. We have arrived at the legendary gates of Naziru, which block passage to the Lost Lands. Something foul is at play here, and the troops are nervous. Not the roving enemy war bands we've seen. Our men can handle those. Unfortunately, the Archmage Guild, or fortunately rather, the Archmage Guild is here to aid us in opening the gates. And we'll have them on our side if battle breaks out. So these might be one of my favorite towers in the game. Uh, almost from an aesthetic standpoint. I like watching them attack. So here we go, the Archmage Towers. Or Archmage, depending on uh, how you like to say that. It doesn't really matter to me. Dealing heavy damage, it can pre-charge its homing magic bolts when idle. So that's one of the cool things about this. So these three little bolts here. If there's no one walking by, it'll charge up to three, and then the first enemy that walks by just gets blasted by them. They have really good range and super high damage, and they're pretty much good against everything. We'll just mess with this vulture. Go ahead. Yep, there we go. Anything else we can mess with? Anything at all? We see this ominous looking gate here. But what do we have coming? Dune Raiders and Desert Thugs. Okay. So this is this is a pretty tricky map. I remember this being somewhat difficult on veteran difficulty. I don't know how hard it's going to be on normal. But I haven't done this in a long time. And we want to be aware of key tower placements and kind of have an idea of our build in mind. So I'm looking at this as a possible place for a dwarf tower. Um, and once it's a dwarf tower, you know, it'll hit all these lanes here. It'll hit this lane here. But then let's say we turn this into uh, something of a crossbow tower. The crossbow tower with increased range will be hitting all of this. And our dwarf tower will be hitting a huge swath. But I think if we're going to place a dwarf tower, perhaps we want it to be here. Hmm. First things first, let's path out our barracks. So that we know which intersections we want to block. Hmm. I think that's a fine position there. Let's do something like this. Okay. We still have a good bit of gold left, so I'm being very kind of methodical. If I'm not talking too much, it's because I'm really trying to think this through.
because we will want some units in the back line. And I think it's going to be this position here. Because it's going to allow us to block from both lanes. Whereas if we place this here, we're only blocking this lane. So we have protection here, 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 and then we have one final. So every lane has a barracks in it. And then this back lane has protection from all three. So I think that's going to be good. And let's get a Dwarven Bombard there. And let's look to quickly get a crossbow tower. And once this is upgraded all the way with Max Raven, if we manage to get to that point, then we will have two very strong Archmage towers here in the center. Maybe even three. But we'll see how that goes. So where do we want Alarak? Stay frosty. Alarak is very good at dealing with these dune raiders so let's send them up here we don't have a lot of towers up here and i think this is going to be a good place for an archer tower because once it's fully upgraded it'll be able to hit the units that want to come here and there goes his sand warrior units who are now strong 140 hp two to six damage i mean they're they're essentially as strong as an upgraded uh let's see an upgraded footman barracks going to be a matter of how we want to spend our gold early on. Do we rush a crossbow tower, which is kind of what I'm feeling. And then we start prioritizing these other towers in the center. And I like that because these three towers here are going to provide us a lot of DPS to every single pathway. And Alarak is just doing his job up top. He's just locking down all of these heavy armored raider units. And we want to make sure we're using our reinforcements. And you see here, they're champions now. Actually, are they champions? Did we upgrade that? No, we, we went ahead with the... Uh, we didn't get them champions yet. These are the dual-wielding variant. But, man, we didn't get them their great weapons. Yeah, we decided to unlock the 5-second cooldown on our meteor instead. Which I don't think was a bad choice. Let's get our crossbow. I think that's fine to do. And then perhaps we'll upgrade this tower now. And we'll give our Sand Warrior someone to fight and they dissipate right at the end. Let's go ahead and nuke this Immortal. If I'd have known more Immortals would be coming, I would have held it, I think. But that's okay. We've almost got enough for our Wizard Tower. Boom, there we go. And even when Alarak is hanging back, his summons are so strong, you can just keep them there. And he also has the damage reflection, which makes him much better at dealing with the Immortals as well. And we really want to be stopping them there. We don't want to leak. How much for the Archmage Tower? So, 300, but look at the damage on that. And we've got it. So let's get it. Wizard specialized in warfare that can charge its homing magical bolts of deadly magic. So there we go. It does Twister. Summons a tornado that pushes up to five enemies back and it deals damage. So it's pretty much like the teleport, if you'll remember from the first game. And it is strong. And they also have critical mass. So they have a 35% chance of exploding and doing AoE damage. So they can also be used for that. But they're going to annihilate these uh, these flying waves here. This flying wave is essentially going to be free gold for us, which is nice because it will allow us to get another upgraded tower. And you'll notice we're a bit weak in this lane, so that's I think we're going to bring Alric down here. Because even if we leak at this position, those units still have to come here and get past Alric. So he, maybe he should have been here for the last couple waves, helping to deal with those uh, those dogs. But our new enemy is the giant wasp queen. So utterly tough flying insects that carry several offspring in their bellies. Slow speed, flying, and they spawn giant wasps. So we want to take them out quickly if we can. You know, while we're waiting, let's commit camel side. There we go. 
And we can summon early for some easy gold. Yeah, and these sand warriors are going to be great at dealing with the sand hounds. They actually beat them quite handily one on one. And we leaked. I can't believe it. I wasn't paying attention. That's what happens when I'm talking too much and not not playing enough. But we should not have leaked there to those spawn. Those were spawned uh, from the Hornet Queen, and I didn't expect them. So we'll know that from now on. We'll still get three stars with 19 lives, but uh, that was unfortunate. No, that's bad. We need them right in the center as far away as they can go. Right now, we just kind of need a lot of things. Alwark is doing a good job. He's really close to leveling. So there goes another crossbow fort for us. And these guys being upgraded would not be a bad idea. Let's heal Alwark before he dies. And I'm pretty sure we can just call early there. I'm assuming these gentlemen are magic resistance, they are not. Interesting. Okay, what are we upgrading now? Would be nice to get a dwarf tower back here. And we certainly want to have the DPS necessary to kill all the endless spawns of, what are these guys called, Fallen? Yeah, so we'll get ourselves a little bit more AoE here. If this was a Dwarf Tower, uh, with the, the fire on the ground ability, man, I already forget what it's called, but, uh, I mean, this would be a complete non-issue, but unfortunately we don't have that kind of gold yet. We do have the very powerful Archmage Tower, which we'll look to upgrade if we do get the gold. We're only on wave six. So we're doing fine, but let's send Alarak over here to help us deal with these guys. And we'll get some footmen because we're going to need something just a bit stronger to kill these fallen. Wow, they must do a lot of damage. Yeah, 30 to 60. Okay, I did not know that. I should have paid attention. Yeah, they're, they're almost like stronger than Alrek. Yeah, 800 life. Okay. Let's see if we can get another Archmage Tower here just to have higher DPS because we need the DPS. And they're no doubt hurting themselves every time they attack him, but... So here we go. Another, another queen. This time we have a bit more uh, air defense, I should say. We have another crossbow tower that we didn't have the last time, and we're about to have another Archmage tower. And Alaric can't do anything to help us in the air here, so we'll send him over to the side with the ground units. And here we go. Once this is upgraded, this tower will be able to hit more, uh, more often into this lane, which will be quite strong. Let's look to get an Archmage Tower here. We're, this tower is always going to be firing, so having it completely upgraded will, uh, it's almost like guaranteed DPS for us. Man, if we had the Buccaneer hero, we'd be generating so much extra gold. There's so many, like, little, little units that we're fighting, uh, and he'd be getting, like, a gold off of each one of them whenever they die at a pretty high, a pretty high success rate. And we might just put another mage tower here. No. I think the plan was to put a crossbow tower here so that it could hit this part of the wave as well. And archers. So archers are deadly. Hold them back. Let the sand warriors take tons of damage from these scorpions. Let's back up Alric. He can still be useful even when he's hurt just by summoning...
we're doing great. These Archmage Towers, when they're fully charged, they almost one-shot those, uh, those Scorpions. So they're not so scary once you have these. Okay. And I think a Tier 4 upgraded Falconer, or Tier 3 rather, would also reach out to all of these. Let's bring him over here. We can get some footmen there. We want them to hold just a bit better. It's hard to prioritize upgrading the Dwarven Artillery. And we're going to block them up there. pretty scary but we're gonna put all our reinforcements down there and unfortunately we took tons of archer tower and we can get ourselves a twister see if that helps us push back some of these waves and we can get another twister as well my only thought is that we need as much pure DPS as we can get before the final wave which is going to be something special. And there we go, there's the twister. Didn't really hit at a good time, but when it does, it's super strong. Does damage, brought him all the way back. And the executioners are here just to kind of clear out all of our barracks units. So that was a pretty good shot from the charged up Archmage Tower. So 60 to 120 damage. They have great range. And fortunately for us, there are no real resistances on these guys. Only their massive HP pools. These archers suck. Just get rid of them. They're messing us up. So let's get some increased range, and we'll do it again, and then we'll do it again. So check out all of these towers that are now affected. Super nice range. And we don't have to upgrade any of the others because they are under effect. So that's nice. And we're also getting crits. So the crits, the range is nice, but we're also getting a lot more crits on our towers than we were before. And we can start upgrading our Dwarven Bombards and get ourselves our first Dwarf. And we'll also want one here as well, if we can afford it. So just at tier 3, I mean, 30 to 60 damage isn't bad, but it's the ability to hit everything around itself that makes it so strong. And we've almost got it, and there we go. And that tornado sucked up a bunch of units and brought them back. So it kind of time walked them in a way. Furnace Blast is going to be strong. And we want to upgrade this one because it is also under the effect of the Raven. Let's call early for 15 gold. Don't want to mess with these archers. And that's why we're leaving these barracks, gentlemen, unupgraded. Because they're just going to die to the archers anyway. Their only job is to live long enough to force them to stand here and take shots from our crossbow towers. But we might also want to at least give them all one uh, upgrade of barrage. After we get another dwarf tower up here. And let's move him before he gets shot to death by the archers. And we want these units to stand in the area of effect of our dwarf. We want them to take that furnace blast. And when you upgrade it, it does a lot more damage. Kill some of these immortals. Make sure we're not leaking. But once we get our dwarf up here, this, air, this lane will be a lot more safe. And we'll call early for that gold. And now we have a dwarf. And once we get furnace blast... I'll feel comfortable here. Um, 
it was pretty necessary for us to put our DPS here because you have to be looking at this gate and expecting something big to come through it at some point. And I think we're going to get Barrage next. And giving them a chance to do the AoE with critical mass is not bad. It's In some upgrades, you would see this and you would think, okay, it's a, it's a chance to do an AoE attack, but it's just a strict upgrade. It's, it's purely giving you more damage on an attack. So I think that's something they kind of tweaked in the second game. A lot of those upgrades in the first game made it so that you gotta, instead of attacking, a tower would do a thing. But in this game, they continue attacking or they modify their attacks to do an increased effect. So this, sometimes it almost felt like a negative. You were like, man, my tower does so much damage, I wish it was just attacking. And then it would be fine. Yeah, we need to get the Furnace Blast on here to make sure we don't leak to these, uh, what are they called again? Sand Wraiths. G.I. Joe, train a thousand soldiers. And there we go. Furnace Blast is going to really help us to do damage there. Yeah, let's just get the AoE attack. The range on this is so big. Uh, it's a nice tower to upgrade with anything. We could also get Twister on there. Look to get more barrages. And you'll see there, one just went off. Very good single target damage with barrage. And once you have all the upgrades as well. And once you have the Thorns Aura on Alaric, those Executioner guys essentially kill themselves by attacking him. Oh, that's so much damage. Yeah, now we don't have to be afraid of those guys, and we can get ourselves a Twister. And we have at least one level of Barrage on all of them. And we can look to get... You can look to get critical mass on this tower as well. Let's get him out of there. Run, Nellar. Okay. So we have 400 gold. We could look to get the drill. Let's get it. See if it does anything for us. It's experimental. It could be a huge waste of gold. Or it could be awesome. So let's kill these guys. We Oh man, are we gonna leak to flipping summons here? I hope not. Oh man, wasn't paying enough attention. Can we pull it back? So critical mass helping us there. And Twister as well. Clearing out some of those waves. Okay, so here we go. Our first, I think this is our first boss battle. So let's see if we can kill him. What's his name? Naziru. 8,000 HP. And he just turned our towers into sand castles. But our sand warriors are going to do very good at holding him back. He has no armor and no magic resistance. So it's just pure large HP pool. And as soon as our sand warriors get snapped, We'll send in our reinforcements, so he has to do it twice. I have no fear. And you'll see how strong that ability is. Blood and, sand. and we got him. He dropped his lamp. Defeat Nazuru the Red Efreet. Or Efreeti? Efreeti. Okay. Genie. We got him. So that was our first boss battle, and it was pretty easy there. And we unlocked a new hero. Who is it? Oh, we got Cronan. Okay, Cronan's pretty cool. Uh, he's a summoner. He summons lots of animals. So we get like one of his, each of his abilities, and give him two boars to help him block up a lane. I think maybe we can use him in the upcoming jump jungle maps. Master that seems pretty thematic. Master. And we also have some upgrades here on Alaric. 
So I think we can do something like increase his HP because he needs it and give him a better flurry attack. I think that's fine. So what's the next one? Crimson Valley? Okay, I remember that map as well. And we also have more upgrades that we can get. So I like getting uh, the upgrade that allows us to have a bigger rally point. It gives us more options as to where we place our barracks. And just getting pure attack damage on any one of these is fine. But let's do it for our crossbow towers because they are kind of the most prevalent tower that we will use. Iron Mode Challenge. Maybe we'll pick up in the next video with the Iron Mode Challenge for Naziru's Gates. And then we'll be able to jump into the Crimson Valley. But anyway, that's going to be it for me, guys. This is an hour-long video. It's pretty pretty sweet. And in my free time, I'll, I'll knock out the rest of these. Uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. That lets me know that I'm doing a good job. Subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate every single subscription. I really, really do. If you subscribe for the first, if this is your kind of first video watching, or if you, you saw something in one of the backgrounds of the videos, for whatever reason, just comment, let me know, and we can go back and take a look at it together. So without any further ado, guys, thank you so much. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.